I once hid a girl in my bed whilst my entire family came into the bedroom to have a conversation with me. <laughs> right, Lee. Now, uh, how old were you? Um, I was uh, 18. And a bit of a nervy, nervy question. How 15. old was she? No, she was... Uh, <laughs> actually, she wasn't. She was of age. Of age? Yeah. <laughs> Forty-four. Sixty-five. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was just of a normal age. She was age. a clean. Yeah. normal age. She's a normal age. She's a bit ageist, isn't what? it? Eighteen year old. Are you saying that Rob's abnormal? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if Rob was in my bed, it would be a bit weird. But actually, what? A lot easier to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> just pop him in the pillowcase. Throw him over your shoulder. Off you go. So, you'd had a lovely, tender time with this young lady. The next morning arrived, the start of a whole new dawn, mm. and she was secreted, hidden, under the, <laughs> under the duvet. My dad comes in... Knock, knock, and knock. And I say... Get under there. Under there. And what did your dad there. say? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a news yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't want to have to have an awkward moment with my dad introducing him to this girl, so I said, why don't you just hide under there? <laughs> was, it, was she a very thin girl? Because I would have thought you would have seen a body under a duvet. Yeah. You see, you don't understand the kind of toggage that I'm rocking back at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very thick duvet. Like, thick. Yeah, yeah, plenty of... Was it, was it winter? Duvet Jack? to hide. Was yeah, it, winter? It, was, it was winter. Because yeah, there's nothing cold, worse right. than a heavy tog in the summer. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> but I have um, two duvets within the, the right. thing and then so I take do one I. out. So do I. I happen. take one away for the summer, Yeah. stick it back on for the winter. It's a lovely way of doing it's it. So it. Good. <laughs> I'm sure. God, is it always this boring, this show? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just going to cut to the chase here. You two, watch him very carefully while I ask this question. What was her name? Yeah, well, that's no... <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't say on TV. <laughs> Why? Oh, very good. I want to protect her modesty. But do right, whole as I did come on that morning. Oh, nice. Yeah, do they yeah, my dad will yeah, always come yeah. into my room, yeah. and he always brings in the Telegraph and reads to me little extracts that he's found. <laughs> and then your mum's behind him, and then your brother and sister, and then oh, my can mom, we listen? Well, can what we happened listen? this one morning was that um, my dad had received a round robin, so he came in to read me this letter. I said hide under the duvet. Then my mum came in with a cup of tea, right. and my dad was reading this letter, so he was like, oh, Molly, Barnaby, why don't you come in as well? Sounds like a rough family. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were all round the bed, and she was sort of hidden under there. It was quite a long letter as well, so I had to keep sort of giving her a bit of air. <laughs> and then... You were doing that, were you? Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it a single bed or a double bed? Uh, it's one of these ones that's like a small double bed. Well, like, they're called oh, single, single beds. Bed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it wasn't... Well, is, this, is this the first time that had happened? Had they... Had you never I'd had been a in that girl, situation before? Or? I'd brought a girl back before, uh, but I'd m been very careful to sort of sneak her out in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'd, like, distracted my dad and then you just oh, go, so go, that, go, go. Oh, so that was the plan? The plan was you were going to sneak her out without anyone noticing? Through the yeah. laund laundry chute? Um, <laughs> I didn't know what a laundry chute is. The butler normally just takes oh, it from right. the room. <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, sorry. No, but I was planning on sort of, you know, sort of sneaking out and not having to deal with this situation. Yeah. And, and at the end, she was under there for too long, I had to let her out. Not let her out, that sounded like... <laughs> she, was, she wanted to be there initially. Um, the only way you can conceal someone lying under a duvet is to lie on top of them in exactly the same body shape that they are. Yeah, really. but I was sort of, you know... I like it's sort of over her. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> no, no, I just like yeah, so yeah. I could, you know, I had a I bit of my body on her. I don't like humans touching me. <laughs> just a bit of. Uh... All right. So what do you think, Lee? Okay, I, I think. Well, so Jim, what do you think? True. You think it's true? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm borderline true. Yeah, true. Borderline go true. true. Go on then. We'll go with true. You're going to say true? Mm. Okay. Jack Whitehall. Were you telling the truth, or were you telling a lie? It is a true. Oh. Oh. Scandalous. One of the codes I live my life by. <laughs> Always a good start. <laughs> is that my appearance should be in no way noteworthy. But then again, not so unnoteworthy as to be in itself noteworthy. <laughs> what do you think? Well, if it is true, you're certainly carrying it off. <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide on this code? It didn't happen suddenly. It just, you know... It sort of developed. Well, the way I developed. felt comfortable being yeah. sort of gradually formed into the, the philosophy, yeah. and I don't think that's too grandiose a term, <laughs> that, <I've, laughs> that I have read off a card for you yeah. today. 
I would say you're, since you've got a beard, yeah. you have become more noteworthy. The answer to that is I've enjoyed growing a beard. But you're right, because I've grown a beard, some people have said, oh, I see you've grown a beard, or he's got a beard, look at his beard. And I hate Can those moments. Can I just put you up on the point? I deeply hate <laughs> those moments of being physically noticed. <laughs> have, you re have you really enjoyed growing a beard? Well, no, well, that's what's so odd. I mean, I haven't, like, hugely enjoyed it. It's no. not been like a brilliant roller coaster. <laughs> but, but it's just very, very slightly I've enjoyed it, and very slightly also I've had a sense of achievement. Of course, it's, it is no achievement. It's actually a failure in personal hygiene. <laughs> but, but it feels like an achievement. But you, did, you surely went through the difficult, itchy stage. I did get it. No one enjoys yeah. that. No. no I, I call them my teens. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you make these rules about the, everything? Uh, are the underpants you're wearing unnoteworthy enough to be on? To, you know what I'm saying? Are they? <laughs> no, no I, I don't think. Sorry. That. Let's start again. Are you wearing underwear? <laughs> uh, yes. OK. I, I don't want to sound too sexy, but yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to sound too sexy, but no. Oh. Under my underwear, I'm naked. Oh. <laughs> David, yeah. I want to know not what you consider noteworthy, I want to know what you consider so unnoteworthy that it becomes noteworthy. A grey tie. If you were in a suit, and like you're in a suit-wearing scenario, yes. and you wore a grey tie, that would be so unnoteworthy as to be in itself noteworthy. So a grey tie... It could be so colourless, so not wanting to draw the eye, it would draw the eye. It's how you spot spies, isn't it? People who are just trying, trying to... to blend in so much, they blend it in so much they're noticeable. It's true. Like it? a chameleon. If there was a chameleon in here, yeah. it would stand out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, if there was a comedian in here, it's done. <laughs> but... It's a worrying round of applause on the subject <laughs> of our purpose, isn't it? Is it true or is it a lie? Make your decision. I think it's true. I think it's very plausible that David would uh, be like that, yeah. OK. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's true. True. I'll yep. go in my team true, and say true. true. All saying true. David, truth <laughs> or lie? Yes, well, of course it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I once got stuck in a cave for an hour after getting the hood of my cagoule <laughs> caught <laughs> on a stalactite in a way I couldn't untwizzle. <laughs> right, caves and stalactites. Lee, Max, team. Well, the bit that we definitely believe about, about that story is cagoule. Cagoule. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doubting cagoule. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Red. And when in the last three weeks did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> This happened uh, when I was uh, a, a boy, a child, a human child. A boy child? child. A boy child. <laughs> <laughs> what cave was it? Uh, it was somewhere in France. Oh, holiday? Yes. Deliberate ploy by parents to get rid of you? <laughs> Give him the baggy cagoule and find a <laughs> stalactite, <laughs> then run. You were, in, you were in there for an hour? Yeah, I was, I was caught on the, on the stalactite. For an hour? For an hour, Just yeah. remember, I mean, again, stalactites go down, right? Stalactites hang down. Hang down. Stalagmites go up. And the easy way to remember it yeah. is that stalactites have a C in them. Stalactite, C for ceiling. Yeah. Stalagmites have a G, G for ground. No, it's the Ooh. stalactites come down, isn't it? Tites, tites, but tites, tites go up as well. Not, no, they don't. Not when I'm around. <laughs> <not>. <laughs> 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 How did you eventually escape? My uh, dad came and released me. So you're with your family on, on this trip? Well, they were sort of... It took them an hour, hour? to find you. <laughs> I would have thought, if I'd have lost you and you'd have been my child, it would have been six or seven days. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what are you thinking, Lee? Could this be true? Mm. What do you think? I'm going to go for a lie. You think it's a lie? Mm. Bob? Lie for me, Lee. Lie. Lie. David? It's a lie. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have told my children that every time they lie, a puppy dies somewhere. <laughs> now you've used this line on the children, has it actually stopped them from lying? Well, it certainly seems to have done. Yeah. Because they do care about puppies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a relief, actually, that you're saying that didn't result in your children telling loads and loads of lies and getting excited <laughs> by the prospect of puppy death. <laughs> on that level. No, I don't have sadistic children. 
But it's also bad advice, because what if a dog goes to attack them and they tell a lie and the dog still gets them? <laughs> <laughs> Actually... That affects the nearest. <laughs> That's what the nearest dog will die. So you just... <laughs> yeah. well, statistically, you'd hope... Yeah. By osmosis, the yeah. lie will dog, kill... Essentially, you tell the lie, yeah. dog death spreads out from yeah. you till it finds a dog, <laughs> the dog dies, and then the wave of dog death stops. Can I just ask Joe, why a puppy and not a kitten? She's not sick. <laughs> it, it was a difficult decision to make. It was a toss-up between a kitten, a puppy, and their dad. And <laughs> it's the kind of puppies are the sweetest. What is your verdict? My team say true. You're saying true, yeah? yeah. OK, so, Joe, is it true? It's a lie. Oh! It's a lie. Oh! It's David. Once a week, I love to eat a full English breakfast, but can only do so if I'm entirely stripped to the waist. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Lee's team, what do you think? Mm. Once a week, you say? Yeah. Any particular day of the week? I, at the weekend, usually a Saturday or a Sunday. Do you know what the weekend is, David? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you cook it, mate? Do you yeah. cook it in that state of undress? Or do you get undressed once it's cooked? I, 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 get, I get undressed once it's cooked. <laughs> Only, I mean, it's, it's, there's a limit to the amount of undressing required. I mean, I, I take my top off. Boxers or...? No, it's... it's I think it's I, waist up, I think. I, 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 up. Yeah, that's the... Yes. Waist up, yes. It would be odd if he, if he had a breakfast... <laughs> but he, from the waist down, he stripped naked. Yeah. That would be odd if you went round to his house and said, thank yeah. you, David, for the sausage and beans. We're not done yet. Yeah. Oh. No, that's... Get them off! Yeah. <laughs> and none of you are going to ask why. I am about to ask. Oh, good. <laughs> what on God's earth function does taking your top off play in this breakfast? In many ways, I've I've lost a lot of self-respect. You <laughs> have. Years, and sometimes I like to wallow in that. <laughs> in that case, we think it's true. <laughs> I do find there's a certain amount of splatter involved in in the eating of a. Of a full Is this English. getting sexual? <laughs> N not from my body. <laughs> <laughs> Is this on your own, or would someone join you? I would more usually on my own. But <laughs> I, I would. <laughs> would you like someone to join you? I don't think so. Really. I'm not offering. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I ask you a question, Gabby? Do you like a fried breakfast? <laughs> David, David, is is this on? Sorry. <laughs> Is this for practical reasons, it, it, as you say, just oh, yeah. to stop the splashing, yeah. or is it a lovely sense of liberation? Yeah. I think it's partly practical, partly... Yes, of course, you feel closer to nature. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? What are you going to say? Is he telling the truth here? Christy, what do you think? Do you eat with your clothes on? I do, I do. You don't strip off for any reason to do with eating? No, not really. Do you think he does? Having got to know David during the course of this evening, <laughs> I rather suspect he does. <laughs> uh, Diane, do you...? Do I, no, I do not. No, no I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, do you believe...? <laughs> I was going to say, do you believe...? I wasn't I... taking the opportunity to go, do you have fright? Do you want to come round my house? Will you take the top off? I wasn't going to say that. No, I was of thinking course, it. I was absolutely <laughs> thinking that. I've never said it out loud, but now you've brought it up. <laughs> Do you want to come round on Sunday? <laughs> I'll, I've got burnt out potato waffles. <laughs> do, do you think David is, is telling the truth, or oh, do you...? I think he's telling the truth. I, I think David, David's a well-brought-up, educated chap. Yes, never no, do anything never. quite so stupid. Dev yeah, but so it's, it's, not true. it's not true. I'm, I'm, I'm on lie now. Yeah. OK, we have to go with lie, then. You're going to say lie. David, truth or lie? Please don't be true. It is a lie. Thank yeah. you. Gotcha. <laughs> I once had a snog with one of the people here on Would I Lie to You Tonight. Whoa! <laughs> one of us six. Yeah, six. <laughs> you hang on a minute, I'm here as well. Yeah, six. Yeah, you're one of She didn't snog herself. That's true, that's true, that's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my word. I think my, my, my poor grasp of mathematics has never been more cruelly exposed. <laughs> So one of us six people... You, why am I saying one of us six? I know it wasn't me. One of them five... <laughs> was well, it you? It's true. 
<laughs> um, no, 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 I'm Spartacus. <laughs> You see, I, I definitely... It would be very awkward I... if all six of us have snogged her. <laughs> but she could only remember one. <laughs> if it's true, will the person remember, or is it like a, a drunken thing, or...? I don't know if they will remember. This is getting awkward. If this is true, oh. this could be very awkward. I don't so know. So, how many years ago? I think it was in, uh, 98. So, 15 years ago. Just the snog? Yeah. Oh, Word. it's going to be David at university, isn't it? Why did they go to university together? They're both Cambridge, aren't they? We did. Yes. And were you but... in the same? No, but David is quite a lot, quite a lot younger than me. So. Uh, but were you still hanging it... around the university? <laughs> 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 trying to trying to prey on freshers in freshers <laughs> week. <laughs> What you haven't said yet, Mel, is you haven't really painted a lovely picture for us of, of the circumstances, where you yeah. were. Yep. Just talk us through that. It was a works do. Uh, not me. I've never worked in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a works do, and everyone had been working very, very hard. It was, a, it was a long series, and it was the end of term party. Stop end of looking series at me, parties. Mel. <laughs> in the, what was the, the, what was the series? Uh, it the was the England rugby team. <laughs> <laughs> was that a test series? <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a show back in the late 90s. Uh, was it Late Lunch? It was called Late Lunch. So the show you did Late Lunch, lunch. So was the person you kissed a guest on the show or were they a regular on it? Or? No, Ryan? we were colleagues. This was... is a totally new type of round. For this, this is. <laughs> You stop it, trying to work out whether it's true or not. Just who it is. was. <laughs> who was it? <laughs> Wait, who was it that you kissed? <coughs> was it Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me when you kissed him he didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> who was it that you kissed? Dermot. You know? It was Dermot. Dermot? It was Dermot. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, this, is, this is a weird one now, because if it's not true, poor Dermot now has got to answer all these questions. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to question oh. other panellists. Oh, well, this it's is not on, his we're, uh, No, no, we're in new territory. This has never happened before. Rob? My proclamation is thus. You can quiz O'Leary. <laughs> However, oh. he doesn't have to answer unless he so chooses. Well, to be fair, that's true with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot be legally required to speak. If you Did want you to make people to... talk when they don't want to, you have to waterboard them. <laughs> I'm happy to waterboard him if you want to... <laughs> Mel, what yes. was Dermot doing in this show? Dermot was the um, guy responsible for getting the audience in. Has Dermot said if he remembers this? Dermot, huh? do you remember this? That would, that would scupper my team's chance. I can't answer that. Yeah, oh, that's under. You mean no. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, were, you were working on... I was working on London. What was your position? I was, uh, well, I was sort of audience researcher, so... Oh, that's Andy. Just what she just said, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> in 1998, were you in a relationship or was it OK to push you on this? I'm not sure. <laughs> You said at the time, Dermot, that you weren't in a relationship. Oh, well, he can't have been then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what are you going to say then, uh, Lee? What are you thinking? That's an interesting one, this, isn't it? What I do you think? think? Oh, it feels plausible. Like... Do you plausible. think? It's plausible. It is plausible. It's definitely plausible. I just it's... think O'Leary's been too kind of reticent on the details and the facts. Yeah, that... but is he? It could be awkward because he doesn't remember, or he remembers very well and he's trying to play for his team. Gentleman doesn't tell. I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Based on O'Leary. Matt, what, what are you thinking? Uh, on this? I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't think the dates fit. Lie. Well, go with lie then. You're saying it's a I lie? I think it might be true, but I'm going with my team and okay. saying lie. Mel, it was a wonderful, wonderful tale. Was it true or were you telling a lie? Well, Rob, gents, Dermot, <laughs> I was telling the truth. Oh! <laughs> I was sacked from my job in a call centre for repeatedly using different accents on the phone. 
<laughs> David's team. Who were you in a call centre for? Who did you work for? I was working for Royal Mail. R Royal what? Mail? Yes. And what sort of call do you get? Where, where's my post? <laughs> <laughs> it was a while ago, and um, you used to not have Google, and people used to ring for postcodes. What's your favourite accent to do? So obviously, Welsh is easy, so... Would you do the accent of the postcode? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would sometimes you could do that. So, okay, I'll be the person okay. who needs my postcode. Okay. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, that does sound like a pre Google phone, I'll give you that. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Bula da. I need a postcode, please. That's nice. Oh, are you Welsh as well? Ah, oh, Demi Fafat. Oh, nothing now to be the Mayor. I can Mayor a sitting at a panel like I get a moron to your left. <laughs> Please. All right, um, 14 Mac Avenue. Oh, now where's that now? <laughs> it's just round the corner from Success Street. <laughs> <laughs> 14 Mac Avenue, Deadsville, Nowhere Town. I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, it is in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that's very really near Swansea. Uh, the postcode you require is S for Sugar, W for Wilson, H, R for Robert. B for Bertie. That's a lot nearer Wimbledon than I expected. <laughs> SW. Well, I wasn't always right. <laughs> David, why don't you make an inquiry? OK. okay. Um, hello. Well, uh, hang on, you've got to ring her first. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. The sooner this is privatised, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, hello. Hi. Oh, I, I wasn't expecting to speak to an American. No, I know. It's, it's, it's it's exciting. We just, I just came over here and I got myself a job. That's very good. Oh, That's were very you good. working nine to five, by any chance? <laughs> How can yes. I help y'all? Well, I would How like... How y'all doing there? You have a nice day? <laughs> it's so hot here in London, I can't tell you. I'm sweating like a pig. <laughs> well, hang on, it's not one of those lines, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's real hot here. Yeah. I might just get out of these hot <laughs> In which case, at the other end, you'd hear, ah, really? Oh, gosh, well, I, well, I, 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 I certainly wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so how did they discover that you were doing these voices? I didn't know, but they were listening in <laughs> to check. For training purposes. Mm. And so they were listening in for a week on me. <laughs> Look, I have as much of a sense of fun as the next man. But that's... I hope it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> That's very disrespectful to your employers. They were paying me like four sixty an hour, I think. Well, work more hours. <laughs> <laughs> work more hours, save up, you can go on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> so what did they say to you? What did they say to you? They took me aside and it was there was gonna be like Christmas break and they just said we're asking everyone back after Christmas, but we're not asking you. <laughs> I should have said, that's fine, sugar, I don't even care. But, uh... <laughs> so what do you think? Claude. Uh, no, you have to say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? They wouldn't wait a week to fire her. I'd have fired her immediately. <laughs> I think mean, it's believable that you could be that bored in a phone centre. I, I'm leaning towards true. OK, you're saying it's true. Mm -hmm. Carry out. Truth or lie? It's true! <laughs> yes, it's true. Carry out was sacked from her job for using different accents. As a baby, I was regularly fed coffee in my bottle. <laughs> Lee Max team, what do you make of that? From... from... birth? I thought you were going to say, from your mother's breast. <laughs> <laughs> you were giving coffee in the milk. In, you've got one milky coffee from a very... from about the age of three. This is, this is not hot coffee, obviously. Yeah, no, it would have been quite warm. Warm, milky coffee. And when you got older, did you ever say to your parents, why did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> My children like coffee. Nowadays, you can have what they call a uh, kiddicino. A baby chino, baby sorry. Chino. Baby chino, <laughs> got it wrong, kiddie chino. Actually, a kiddie chino is just a very small pair of trousers. You probably do use them. <laughs> <laughs> if they were put 
putting coffee in your milk? No, no, they weren't putting coffee in my milk. I was having coffee. Slightly mil milky coffee. Okay, nice. Well, that is the same as putting coffee in milk. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no, the very well, definition of milky coffee. <laughs> between putting coffee in milk and putting milk in coffee. What, what is the distinction? Well, it's like the distinction between having a glass of water and going swimming. <laughs> in, one, in, one case, <laughs> in the one case, you're putting water in yourself, in the other case, you're putting yourself in water. <laughs> Did they give you other sort of more adult... Foodstuffs at a very young age. I think I was. I think I was allowed uh, a, a modicum of booze as a as a child. Oh, were you? <laughs> and what age were you allowed booze? I like as a baby. That was to offset the coffee buzz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what 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 were you given as a child? Lee? Evo stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's glue. Yeah, but that was to stop me getting out the cop. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, as a, as a small child. What were they bringing you in your quarters? Uh, just a uh, port and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> took the words out of my self-parodic mouth. <laughs> um, uh, no, the blood of a pheasant. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Did you say pheasant or peasant? <laughs> Lee, what are you thinking? Is there any truth in this? Which way are you leaning? I don't know. What do you think, guys? I think we're skirting <sighs> on the edge of giving out really bad childcare advice. That, that is true, but I can't help thinking that any parent that's looking at Jimmy and thinking, I want to raise a child like that anyway... <laughs> ..is a dodgy parent in the first place. You know what I mean? I think it's nonsense. You think it's nonsense? Nonsense, OK. I, th I think it's a lie. You think okay. it's a lie? Well, we'll say yeah. it's a lie, then. Pretty conclusively, yeah. it's a lie. Jimmy Carr, were you telling us the truth, then, or were you telling a lie? I can tell you it is absolutely... ..true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. As a baby, Jimmy was regularly fed coffee in his bottle. I find it incredibly irritating when other people fiddle with my jigsaws. <laughs> Please, team. What was the last jigsaw you did? It was, a, it was a picture of the city centre in Oxford. How many pieces was it? Uh, a thousand. A thousand. What's your um, jigsaw etiquette? Uh, my, my etiquette? Well, when I say etiquette, I mean, if you're doing a big jigsaw, you have to do it on something so that it doesn't upset everybody else's life. So what do you do it on? Uh, my grandfather's coffin. <laughs> <laughs> because we've all stopped hoping that he's ever going to come out. <laughs> uh, on a card table. On a card oh, table? OK. On a card table? Yeah. That's nearly oh. right. And, and you, you start with the outside. <laughs> you, you, do, you do the whole perimeter. Yeah. Where do you go then? Then I go for recognisable objects in the scene. So which particular recognisable bits are you looking for then? Well, there's a, a, a building in the middle with a sort of dome and a, and a spike. I'm an expert in architecture. <laughs> uh, so there was that thing, and there also there was several people wandering around, you know, like someone on a bicycle. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He's saying, you know, specific... You're looking for specific things. Yeah. A person can go anywhere in the jigsaw. Yes, no, they but, can't. But they can but... only go where they go. I... <laughs> <laughs> you can't... Oh, I put a person... I'm going to put him up there. <laughs> when you do a jigsaw, Lee... Yeah. Do well, you... I don't, Dave, because I've got a life, but carry <laughs> right, on. <yeah. laughs> no, fair enough. Yeah. I was going to say, do, do you use scissors? Because that's... <laughs> that's a... You know I'm not that's a scissors! Rookie... <laughs> So, generally, a thousand-piece jigsaw, you're coming back to it now and again, yeah. work commitments permitting, how long does it take? Let's say... three months. OK, three All months? All right, let's what? say it, three months. Three months? Three months? It's a thousand-piece jigsaw, yeah. 333 pieces a month. Excessive. So he's doing about 90 pieces a week. So he's doing about 15 pieces a day, right? Mm -hmm. 15 pieces a day is borderline, you need help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need help, and I don't like it when people <laughs> help. <laughs> that's, well, that's, the point. that's the point. So, Lee, what's it going to be? Alex? Well, if he was into jigsaws properly and he didn't want a fiddler, you put clink film on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're even weirder than me. Cling film sort of stick to the pieces, and then so when you pick the cling no. film up, it would sort of undo what you do weeks right? and months of work. 
No. That's horrible. Because you it? buy a massive tray. Yeah. You do it on the tray. Not only can you carry it around if you need to dust, yeah. but also the cling film wraps underneath. <laughs> You've watched far too many features on the one show. Haven't you? <laughs> This week we're talking about tricks for jigsaws. <laughs> you probably think it's just the four corners you have to know, but no, get your cling film ready, we'll tell you after this. <laughs> 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 uh, John, do you think it's... Well, I can see it. I think David's the, a contemplative type of person, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and jigsaw puzzles... Uh, Kind of allow you that loose space to be uh, room, you know, mm. to be a ruminative. T takes you to a ruminative place that you wouldn't otherwise uh, enter in the normal <laughs> run of events. But just to clarify, is it true or false? Yeah. <laughs> true. Oh, okay. Go, 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 go. True. Okay. You're gonna say true. Okay, David. Truth or lie? It is true. Oh. Oh. A little chimpanzee once came to my house for tea. <laughs> David's team, what do you think? A, a little chimpanzee. How little? A, a tiny chimp, about this. Hi. And did it come alone? It preceded um, an expected guest. Was that gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> what did it eat? Um, well, we tried um, Marmite because it was a Sunday afternoon and we were having sort of tea and Marmite toast, uh, and that's what my kids liked. Um, but it turned its nose up at that, so <laughs> we gave it cheese and tomato sandwiches and she opened them up and took the inside and seemed to be quite happy with that. Probably on a no carbs diet. <laughs> <laughs> What's a chimpanzee doing? Coming round Good quest to your house for tea. <laughs> yeah. She was with the friend who was expected, and the friend who was expected was running late, and she sent the chimpanzee on ahead. <laughs> so, when... Did, so, did the chimpanzee ring the doorbell or knock on the door? Or... Knocked on the door. And you <laughs> answer the door, and there well, is... I, I went to the door, and yeah. my wife said, who's that? And I said, it's a chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah. She said, what does it want? <laughs> and the chimpanzee was doing this. And I said, I think it wants tea. She said, well, ask it in. How did the chimpanzee get to your house? Um, I ordered a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a courageous man. If I was answering the door and I saw a chimpanzee, yeah. I wouldn't invite it in for tea. <laughs> I'd be afraid. I'm, I'd, I'm not keen on wasps. Really? Uh, and they're much, much smaller than chimpanzees. <laughs> who, who was the friend? Was it Michael Jackson? I mean, who... <laughs> who were you receiving? It was a lady that I had worked with um, quite some time before this afternoon. Why did she have a monkey? Because she, did, she, she had very few friends. All right, David, what are you thinking? Th this sounds I think it's peculiar. true. I th at the moment, I think it's true. What do you think? I don't know. I want to know why she would send it first. A sense of fun, surely. Is it a bit of a joke? Go up there, knock on his door, it'll be amusing. <laughs> what do you think? What I think, I think Charles Dance, a chimp in a cheese sandwich, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Which way are you going to I think mean? we're going to go true, though. You're going to say true, yeah? Yeah. OK, Charles Dance, your chimp story. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I'm sorry to say that it's true. <laughs> I once set fire to my house with a box of fireworks. David Mitchell's team. Uh, was this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was done out of ignorance. Right. <laughs> what age were you? I was somewhere around about seven. I want to know where you grew up, where a seven-year-old can buy a box of fireworks. I bought them in the shop near where I lived in Middlesbrough. It was a box 
for two and six of Standard Fireworks. That was the brand. <laughs> standard <laughs> brand. That sounds exciting. <laughs> standard Fireworks. Yeah. A normal level of excitement will be endeavoured. <laughs> <laughs> for a bonfire night, you will forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it says Standard, but yeah. then it's... <laughs> Well, that is standard for a firework. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in your home, yeah, and no, you're seven or eight years old. I'm seven, and I'm on my own, yeah. On your okay. own. Yeah, and what it was late, what, on one of the fireworks, I think it was the sparklers, it said, not suitable for indoor use. Mm -hmm. Which, at that age, makes you think, ah, that ah. means they're OK. Could you just not read the word not when you were being... <laughs> <laughs> Did you think not was the brand? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, lovely. I, I love that not brand food. It's not for human consumption. <laughs> I know that logic that says, well, people have obviously tried them indoors. Oh, they've discovered just... they're not suitable. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, I won't use them indoors because I want to live. If you look at a big firework, it won't say not suitable for indoors. It's so it's obvious. Yeah. Right. But well, on not the sparklers, everybody. they chose to put it on. So what happened? I lit the sparkler. The, the sparks went into the box of fireworks, a standard box, <gasps> and set them off. And I carried the box of fireworks, now beginning to light, into the kitchen, and I threw them into the kitchen. <laughs> I thought it would be more suitable. <laughs> I think you're right. The kitchen of all the rooms is the most suitable for fireworks, <laughs> isn't it? it because is. of the oven, the gas, the it's... stove, there is fire naturally in the kitchen. Yeah, there's a lot of... And there's more, it's more wiped down, yes. Yes. less cloth. <laughs> so, so what happened then? They went off in the um, What kitchen. was the sound like? Was it bing, wee? <laughs> no, these were only standard. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, I, can't, I remember, as I'm sat here now, um, wiping the scorch marks off the floor and thinking that my mum's going to kill me. Yeah. And so I'm going to be in big trouble. Then I went back into the living room, unbeknownst I... to me... Yeah. I dropped one. <gasps> and it was, the living room was completely engulfed in oh. flames. It sounds to me that if you're on your own at home at seven, your mum's pretty laid back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He said, son, will you sit here and look after these fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I go out to the bingo. <laughs> so, you lit the sparkler. A spark went into the standard box. Yes. The box starts to go, you go, uh-oh, I must get them into the most suitable room for fireworks. <laughs> yes. The kitchen. No need to go beyond the kitchen to the outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Mum the... said, don't go out. <laughs> At least one oh. rule in your house. <laughs> <laughs> what time of day did all this happen? This happened mid afternoon. Oh dear, so you didn't really get the benefit of it. Who got the fire out? I went to next door where Miss Best lived. She was about, bless her, she was about 80. And I knocked on their door and said, My house is on fire. And she said, Do you know, I thought it was. <laughs> 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 so what happened then? She called the fire brigade. They fired their water hoses. Throughout the house, yes, ruining it. Even the rooms Ru where there's not, no ruining, fire. Not, yeah. not ruining it. Yeah, you do know that before they put out fires, it's already ruined, don't you? Lee. You're making this house all wet. It was lovely and warm. Lee. Oh. And it's the water damage yeah. that knackers the yes. house. Which, Is it not yeah. the fire? Not the fire. <laughs> if they would use their boots to put it out. <laughs> Honestly, the entire house. That's it. I was in a. I was in a family of four children, and we had, we were homeless. <laughs> where, where... Oh, keep it light. No, I'm just saying. Where were all the other kids while you were alone with the fire? Why did you take three They were looking after fireworks you. in other people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say you were homeless, how much of the house did the inferno claim? It's gone. Entire house what, the gone. Whole house, whole house gone. Yeah. The whole house burnt whole house down. Burnt down. So how much did you leave in the living room? The fireworks in the kitchen have only caused a few scorches. Yeah. What did you leave in the living room? And now, and now, don't you feel stupid for saying standard fireworks? Yeah. I tell Not you, really. they well, I think they you were stupid. <laughs> they had like a sparkler indoors. <laughs> if you don't know what you dropped yeah. in the living room, is there a chance that it's just a coincidence? No, it could be. But it might not have been your fault. <laughs> That's what I said to the press. It's not your fault. <laughs> press? Who, what, what press? Who, who, who did you speak to? Local press. Because they, they came to the house while it was burning? Yeah, you know, they're, they're hats on. 
trilbies <laughs> sniffing around. <laughs> With those little bits of paper in the <laughs> Yeah. Were they called things like Scoop McLean? <laughs> <laughs> I believe he was called Ron Waffle. <laughs> Sorry, Ron, Ron Waffle. It was either him or the other ace reporter on the Gazette was John Caramel. <laughs> it was one of them two. Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> <laughs> the question is whether you think Bob has been telling the truth. Well, I was I thought it seemed very plausible until we heard about <laughs> caramel and waffle. <laughs> I think he thinks he's telling the truth, but I think what's happened at some point he's seen a film in which this has happened. He saw backdrop and is now convinced <laughs> that it happened to him. I think it's a lie. Sarah. I oh, I sort of I was going to say I want it to be true, but that sounds really horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't. I think it might be true. Well, I think it's true. I think it's true. So you're going to go for true? Yeah. Okay, Bob. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At home, if I need to remember to do something, I will put my slippers on the wrong feet and won't swap them back until I've done it. <laughs> David's team. I think that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think we can go straight to an answer. <laughs> so, John, was it the truth? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, so, you put your slippers on the wrong feet to remind you that you've got something to do? Yes. As a, like a knot in the handkerchief? Yes, I stopped carrying a handkerchief around the house in sort of the mid-19th century. Yeah. <laughs> I still carry a handkerchief. I won't get it out because, of course, it's encrusted with snot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, girls! <laughs> you not just use your phone and put an alarm on or something? You'll spot the generation gap here. Look at... <laughs> I quite often set an alarm on my phone. I've got an alarm <laughs> set on my phone now to remind me to put the bins out later. Yeah, but that's kind of different to what Aston's doing. Yours is sort of an early onset tactic, isn't it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you leant forward so happy then as well. I set an alarm on my phone. <laughs> Let's go back to Mr. Cool with his shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> What sort of thing would you use it to remind yourself to do? Well, we have moved house recently, so I very often... <laughs> remind yourself not to go back to the old house. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be unpacking something and I'll think, oh, I'll put that picture up and I'll go up to get a hammer from the uh, hammer room. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the way up, I'll see something else that needs doing. I'll think, oh, I'll put that washing away. And then by the time I'm putting the washing away, I've forgotten about the picture. Paint a picture for the, for the viewers who are wondering what sort of slippers you wear. Uh, they're a sort of blue... They're a sort of corduroy slipper, David, you would like. I mean, they're <laughs> almost sort of... They look the same. It's just sometimes I put them on the wrong way by accident. And I think, what have I got to do? And I think, oh, no, I've just put them on the wrong foot. <laughs> what are you thinking, David's team? What do you think? I would, I would say it's true. Yeah, I think it's, it's a good so system. It's so plausible, isn't it? I'm going to adopt this. I'm thinking of swapping my shoes now to make sure I don't forget about the bins later. <laughs> so, John, truth or lie? It is a lie. No! I was ticked off by the headmaster after I mistakenly packed a pina colada in my daughter's lunchbox for a school trip. Whoa! <laughs> wow. Um, Oh, what did you what think did you it get? was? What did you think it was? Well, they have these lovely, really lovely, like, frozen packs for the freezer, and you just take them out and squeeze them out. It's like a little frozen, but they really look <laughs> juicy. I thought it was just a little juice. Are you thinking of fruit shoots and things no, like no, that? No, 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 I'll tell you the name. Do you want to know the brand name of yes, it? Yes, I do. Capri Sun. Oh, the fruit drink in a pouch. Delicious. I love them. <laughs> so why did you think that it was anything else? Because you were the one that bought it. Yeah, because I just buy lots of stuff for the fridge. I just grabbed it because I'm not with it in the morning because I've been having pina coladas the night before. <laughs> <laughs> what did the person at school... You, you, did you get a telephone call or were you invited in? Oh, oh I was invited in on the What did they say? Hello, your daughter's drunk. Yeah. No. <laughs> she has okay. six year olds wasted again. Yeah. She didn't drink it. She knew right away what it was. It wasn't for her. Did she report you? Yeah. Oh, she's a grass. <laughs> she's such a grass. She tells people, my 
mummy hides wine in the walls. But in that's the walls? a wine rack. Oh, I see. <laughs> but they have a problem with me anyway. Why? Why? They've met you. Well, yeah, they've met me. That's number one. I I do the school run in a in a bathrobe. No. Oh. What? Not one of those. No. Things, really? You go to school in a bathrobe. Yes, because. What have you got under the bathrobe? None of your business. <laughs> So let's talk this through now. You've gone into the school. They've called you in to the headmaster or headmistress's office. Mm -hmm. What happens? And they just said, um, I suppose you thought you were being funny. And I said, I'm sorry, what was funny? And they said, you know what you thought was funny. And I said, no, I they really don't They spoke to know. you like that, a parent. Yeah. You should see my fresh look. They think I'm 16. That's the other problem. Who does? <laughs> the, the faculty. How sympathetic know. was this lighting? Was it sort of... <laughs> The... We've been doing this show 11 years. That's the most catty thing that's ever been. <laughs> so, Catherine, he says to you, what do you think you were doing? What happened then? He had the pina colada in his desk drawer and said it's not funny to send your daughter on a school trip with alcohol. Wow. What do you think, truth or lie? I could see her doing it. Yes. I really could see you doing it, Catherine. Thanks. But I think it's a lie. So, basically, you don't think this particular incident is true, but she possibly is an alcoholic. <laughs> I think it's most certainly a lie. OK, well, my team seems to think it's a lie. lie, so we'll say lie. OK, Catherine, truth or lie? Nah, it is a lie. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Catherine didn't put a pina colada in her daughter's lunchbox. This is the cushion that I used to carry my pet owl around on. <laughs> I would have brought the owl, but he escaped last week. <laughs> Team. What do you think? What, what kind of an owl was it? Oh, yeah. Tawny. Yeah. <laughs> Tawny's perched on branches. Yeah. So how did you get it to, to perch on a big, flat, soft cushion? Oh, Steve, it's so good to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> how did I? <laughs> Is there a problem here, Steve? Here <laughs> <laughs> are the tower marks. I have a rare breeds farm near me, and they had to get rid of a tawny owl that was injured. It couldn't use its wings, and it, I, I shouldn't use the words, it couldn't use its bottom. <laughs> for what? For, for doing what? For poo pooing. What, what, and I'm, what did it use? <laughs> <laughs> so, as a trustee of the organisation, because it's just down the road from me in Warehorn, I agreed to. Have... <laughs> That I would look, look after it, it actually had what you would call a colostomy bag. <laughs> we would call it that. No, you would. We'd call it a colostomy bag. <laughs> have I said it? Right? We, yeah, we wouldn't have picked it up, but you did specifically say that's what we would have called it. <laughs> and I, I thought I'd better address this because we really, we really wouldn't. Steve, is an owl's colostomy bag called a colostomy bag? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, uh, you, it is. You, would, you wouldn't really need it because the, the majority of, of kind of uh, solid fecal matter with an owl comes out of its mouth. Yeah. Mm. No, we're dealing with a very sick owl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I sound no aggressive there. <laughs> but I can see. <laughs> no, he's escaped now, and I can see his little face. We were given a pipette with what was so owl, it, it, owl nourishment. So you had to feed it with a by pipette. pipette. Yes. And, it, and, and how did it stand on the cushion if, as Steve says, it needs a, a perch? It, no, it was fine, just so. Sort of I've clearly not made it clear. This is an incredibly <laughs> sick bird. <laughs> You can't judge it, so is it by is it the normal <laughs> tawn. So this is just a lump so of sick. meat and feathers <laughs> that is just hanging on in there. But the thing still escapes. Yes, it escapes. <laughs> Actually, I've, I suspect it was killed by my cats. <laughs> Why did this, this um, owl sanctuary, when it has a sick owl, why, why didn't it look after the owl oh. itself rather, rather than give it to a, a local Comedian. celebrity? <laughs> because I'm a very... I have with a cushion and cats. With cats. I'm very closely associated with it. The... Sorry, my client would like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You had clearly said to them you were going to nurse it back to help? No, that was never going to happen. It's palliative care. <laughs> no, it's palliative care. Palliative care, it palliative was like care a, like for the owl. A hospice for the owl, yeah. Oh, the owl. Right. And we had some oh. decent times. <laughs> Did he have a name, this owl? 
We, we called it. Uh... <laughs> Did you? You called it. It's <laughs> all so, right, you're upset, Bob. I can tell. Yeah. It. If you need a minute, it's okay. But what did you call it? Sorry. What, what did you call it? What did we call the owl? Yes. Well, we called him Mavis. <laughs> Mavis. <laughs> Bob, what did you what did you feed it with the, with the pig? It was uh, it was described to me as as owl. <laughs> As owl nourishment. <laughs> it, 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 everything. You, know, <laughs> you just take bowls and put them in a liquidizer. <laughs> no, just, I, Steve, I still know I can't impress on you. <laughs> the most you got out of it. <laughs> it's just a lift and lid. <laughs> it wasn't perched and it was reclined on the cushion. <laughs> that, that was its. That's <laughs> its. <laughs> That was its deathbed. Yeah. We'd have like a broomstick or something and just hold it. <laughs> and what have you told the owl yeah. sanctuary? What have you told them? Because they must have been upset. Uh, no, I've told them he's passed away, yeah. <laughs> and they, 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 they said, well, that's fine. We knew Mavis was going to die soon. That's why we gave him or her to, to yeah. you, a comedian who lives locally, to keep <laughs> on a cushion in the same room as some cats. <laughs> So my, my client what? would like to change his name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, this, I don't, this isn't sounding... And you're, you're a trustee, did you say, of this charity? Yes. It's a rare breeds farm in Warehorn. Um, <laughs> does family days. Um, sadly, I haven't got an owl at the moment. But... What? <laughs> so, David, what are you thinking? Is this true? Um, no, this isn't true. <laughs> I think you made all that up. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't believe they would let him bring a dying, tawny owl home. <laughs> no, I don't no. think so. I think we're saying it's a lie. I think you but, are. But yeah. and I think that's the, you know, the rare breed centre probably needs to look at its working practices <laughs> if it happens to be true. But OK, Bob, <laughs> truth or lie? I was uh, telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's John. OK. I once saw a six-foot goldfish in the jungles of South America. These teams. Were you working? I was working. What were you doing? I was filming this, um, this village, these, these, uh, these, this tribe, and they made me drink the hallucinogenic <gasps> drug. Are you telling us now that you imagined you saw a six-foot goldfish? Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. I don't think I imagined it. I mean, he spoke to me. It can't have been that. <laughs> Oh. Hmm. And, um, and he had What a... did he say? He said, how's it going, man? <laughs> <laughs> and what did it... you say? Well, I didn't say very much, cos it, it isn't very often that a six-foot goldfish with a straw hat <laughs> speaks to you, you know? It, it's, it's a rarity, mm. isn't it? I mean, I then... think you'd agree. Oh, definitely. I it would doesn't agree, happen man. every day, does he it? He had a yeah. straw hat on. He had a straw hat, didn't And you, what, what did you have? Well, this is hallucinogenic drug they drink. Yes. And, and I thought I could take a little uh, sip, you know, and say, oh, yes, how nice, thank you very much. Uh, you know, perhaps I'll drink the rest later or something. And the whole village crowded round to see, watch me drink it. And so Are you I... sure they were there, John? <laughs> <laughs> of course we, they were there. I'd crowd around too if I was going to watch an old white man get off his face for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and at first, nothing happened. And I, I, I was a little bit disappointed. And then um, the moon, there was a full moon, and it kind of came down on a spring right in my <laughs> face. <laughs> And the trees started talking to one another. Have I uh, still got you with me? And uh... Back to you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> John Simpson, off my face, Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what are you thinking? I think he probably is telling the truth. I think it's a lie. OK, I say Maybe. it's a lie too. OK, they're saying it's a lie. John, truth or lie? Well, it's, um, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I'm in a situation where I don't know what to do, I ask myself the question, what would Cliff Richard do? <laughs> <laughs> um, please, team. Right, give me an example. Say you don't know if you're going to go on a skiing holiday or a summer holiday, what would you do in that <laughs> 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 Well, I, I say to myself, what, um, what would Cliff do? 
Cliff Richard as well. I just think because he's someone that lives his life in a way that I believe we should all aspire to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> am I right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so tell, tell me this. What, what was the last dilemma? <laughs> last dilemma you had where the Cliff Richard uh, thing helped? Well, you, you know, you go to you go to Pret. And, uh, as ever, the queuing's a complete disgrace. And you think, what will Cliff Richard do? Well, I walk out. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first let Cliff into your life? Um, in a way, I feel more like I've been let into his. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got a lot of Cliff's albums? Yes. Well... <laughs> I, th I, think you know where this, I think you know where this is going, Miles. <laughs> Of all the albums, all of them, yeah. I just want one album. That's all I want. <laughs> um, Greatest Hits, Volume 2. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Lee? Is it the truth? What do we say, what do we say to that, Amelia? Do you think there's any truth in that? I don't think we can possibly... Not even entertain the notion? No. <laughs> as entertaining as the notion may be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say it's a lie. Say it's a lie. OK. Uh, Miles, truth or lie? This is actually... A lie. <laughs> I once found a suitcase and took it to the police station. When they opened it, it contained 34 bunches of bananas. <laughs> David, uh, where did you find the suitcase? In a train station. Um, well, there are lots of... Do you want a specific train station? Well, no, I'm just sort of thinking that you, you're in a train station, you see a suitcase, you think, I must take that to the police. It that's, was, uh... that's potentially a, a bad approach. No, it was just lying, and I'd say to a couple of people, is that your suitcase? And it was in the climate of fear, and I started to think, well, maybe I should be a good citizen. So I took the suitcase over, and I headed straight to a traffic British transport police guy and told them what had happened. So you, you moved the suitcase you thought might be a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't so much I thought it was a bomb, I just thought maybe somebody had left a suitcase. I mean, well, that wouldn't be a response to the climate of fear, though. That would have been a response oh, to the climate I was, of fear. I kind of panicked. I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Who opened the suitcase to divulge well, all those bananas? I came in, and the British transport police guy took it into his office, and then they scanned it with some, whatever they scanned it with, some. Those things. I get weight throws. <laughs> 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 Part of this is why would anybody put 34 <laughs> bunches of bananas into a suitcase? That's exactly what the chief terror inspector said. He was baffled. That's why. <laughs> Did they ever find this guy? Was I never kept you know. up to date. I don't have a clue. I just left it. You haven't kept I, in touch. No. You... Well, <laughs> he's here tonight. <laughs> I'm the king of the swingers. <laughs> What I doubt here is that, is that if you've taken a piece of unattended luggage to the police, I don't think they're going to then immediately open it. Oh, it, was, or immediately... it was no longer unattended when I got to the police. because no, I was but you're, you're, <laughs> but you're saying... But that's not going to reassure them, because you're saying, I've no idea whether or not this has got a bomb in it. So I never use those words. You don't, you don't use the word bomb in this situation. That just... Do you do a mime? <laughs> I'm, I'm worried this might be... Your... What? <laughs> Right, we need a decision. Truth or lie? Well, it's... Mm. You think it's a lie? I do, really. Yeah, I think it's a lie. Well, we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? OK, uh, Kevin, were you telling the truth? Eh, uh, it's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well done, yeah. Yes, uh, it was a very big lie. Kevin didn't take a suitcase containing 34 bunches of bananas to a <laughs> police station. For three weeks, I was listed as a missing person by Interpol. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Uh, when did this happen? In the mid-90s. Where were you? Had you, had you actually disappeared? Like... I was in Morocco. What were you doing there? I was on a bike ride in Spain. <laughs> you were on... You were on a bike ride in Spain in Morocco. <laughs> Can I have a moment to chat with my client? 
What happened was I met someone in Spain on a train. A Moroccan so, man. Was, was, was this bike ride in Spain happening on the train? <laughs> Was it, it was like, because I know that you get those Spanish, Spanish bike rides on trains in Morocco. That's, that's probably one of those. Well, it was, there was bad weather, and that's why I took the train from the north of Spain to the south of Spain, because apparently, according to the local newspaper, there was better, more agreeable bicycling weather. <laughs> and how, 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 did you then get, how did you then get into Morocco, though? That is because I met that Moroccan bloke on the train. <laughs> and, which, and which Moroccan bloke? Yeah, does he have a name? Uh, I, I can't quite remember, but it was Mohammed or something. <laughs> but Mohammed the Moroccan, yeah. you met on, on the train in Spain. <laughs> he asked me if I wanted to join him to go to Morocco. And then I thought, well, I've never been outside Europe. In for penny, in for pound. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you were picked up by a strange Moroccan on a on a train and agreed to go back to Morocco with him. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> how, how did you find out that you were on the Interpol list? I realised only once I rang my parents. Once I was back in Spain, and I rang my parents, and for them it was like someone found them from beyond the grave. <laughs> So, so why didn't you ring your parents from Morocco? Because that man, that Mohammed, he... <laughs> he you remember, you remember Mohammed, don't you? Yeah, yeah. He, he was the man on the train. The Moroccan on the, the train. The Moroccan on the train yeah, who invited yeah. him back to his house. So, yeah. and then when I was staying uh, with Mustafa and his family... <laughs> <laughs> from what uh, port did you leave Spain and into which port did you enter Good Morocco? question. Well, we left Spain, if I remember correctly, from Alcaceras and went over to Ceuta, which is one of the two Spanish enclaves in the north of Morocco. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just clutched victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> <laughs> How was it then resolved? How did you end up getting off of the list? Well, hang on a minute, we're jumping ahead here. Yeah. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, he's allowed to do that, him, isn't he? <laughs> I was travelling uh, with Art... Uh, with Art... Uh, no, uh, Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed. Mohammed. Uh, <laughs> my client is getting mixed up because at passport control they said he must have a passport. <laughs> and he's getting a bit mixed up with the name. I'm curious as to the fact that Interpol has a missing persons list. Yeah, no, what happened is my uh, parents uh, got involved and they got Interpol involved. Right. And I sent a few postcards, one of them, to my friend Mark. And on that postcard I wrote, I've joined the Foreign Legion. <laughs> <laughs> Probably see you never again, have a good life or something. And then, Mark being a quite clever boy, thought, OK, with this postcard I can have a lot of fun. I go round Henning's parents and say them something along the lines of, oh, uh, Herr Wien, Frau Wien, you might be interested in this. Sorry, so your friend Mark... Yes. ..used this postcard to mentally torture your parents. <laughs> I'll make his parents think he's disappeared forever for a laugh. Well, it's German sense of humour. <laughs> About this, uh, about this Moroccan chap who we're calling Mohammed. He hadn't been home for many, many years, and so we couldn't take the boat straight to Morocco. We had to go to one of the Spanish enclaves because he had to collect a suitcase full of books from a cafe <laughs> in <Full> Ceuta. <laughs> why, why did he have a suitcase full of books? Because someone left them there for him. <laughs> but why books? In a suitcase. Well, that is, it was back in the mid 90s, people were still reading. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he went to a cafe in the Spanish enclave of Morocco yes. to collect a suitcase which he told you was full of books. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose a friend of his left them there. Yes, but why? I mean, you know what it sometimes is like, isn't it? Like, uh, well, I can't quite think of it. <laughs> <laughs> but if he 
could, it would be like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this Interpol list that you were on, can you just elaborate on how your parents got you onto it? Well, they rang the consulate and they rang which all sorts consulate? of... Which consulate? The German one. Which, and... which German consulate? Well, the one in Morocco. They, they, they and didn't the ring one the in... police, they rang the German consulate in Morocco. Well, that's how you would go about it, wouldn't you? It's no good know. ringing your local Bobby. <laughs> And what happens then with the list? Do you just... Th they have to tell Interpol, stop yeah. looking for Henning. We yeah, found I suppose it. so, yeah. Well, did they? <laughs> for all My we know, they're still looking line... for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe! <laughs> so what do you think, David? Does, that, does <laughs> any of that have the ring of truth, or has he made all that up? What do you think, Kirsty? I think it's so odd and inconsistent and unlikely that it must be true. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm leaning towards, Mark. Well. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, think, I, think I think that as true. well. I think it's true. Yeah. Henning, was that the truth or were you telling a lie? Well, this story is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Henning was listed as a missing person by Interpol. When filming is over for the day, Lord Sugar and I sometimes wind down by playing ping-pong <laughs> on the boardroom table. <laughs> That's a hell of a story. True. <laughs> David, what do you think? Have a, have a minute just to let it sink yeah. in. <laughs> you don't play on a proper table tennis table. No. You just play you, on the boardroom table. You can table. buy... Um, it's underneath, actually, in the boardroom. It's rolled up. Right. And then you unroll it and you clamp it on the boardroom table, stretched across, and you're in business. So is it just the net? Just a net, just or is there net. also there's no, not, we don't not have a, the lines. A, a mat with lines? No, no. It's just the table is slightly bigger than regulation size. Right. <laughs> do you, do you... Is it not also curved? Curved. I thought it was curved. <laughs> <laughs> curved like... You're thinking of all swimming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's difficult to tell watching on television, but yeah. how much room? Is there at, e at the end of the table? Oh, plenty. OK, I believe you. Ample. <laughs> yeah. so you have to be able to back off quite a way when playing table tennis properly, I happen to know. <laughs> Can we stamp on this immediately? Lord Sugar's boardroom is plenty big enough for almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you play table tennis. <laughs> Where do you keep the bats? Do you, are they under the table under, during the... Under the She's table. She's left now, hasn't she? Under the table. <laughs> not Margaret, no, 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 no. Not I'll tell her. Not talking about Margaret. <laughs> Margaret's no bat. <laughs> okay. Tell us how this whole thing started. It was my idea. You crazy fool. <laughs> it was my idea. No, but the point is that... It's a fairly long, drawn out, drawn out process. It is tense. It, it is nerve wracking, particularly for, uh, for, for, yeah. for Karen and I, yeah. because we don't know what on earth's going on. It's only Lord Sugar who's master of all this. And I just sort of murmured to him once that I find this very difficult. And he said, Well, look, don't worry. Next time I'll bring in a net and some balls and some bats, <laughs> and it'll help you relax. <laughs> and, that, and, it, and it grew out of that. So what does Karen do? How does she relax? Because if you're playing... She's umpire. She's umpire? <laughs> She's got a very keen eye. So what do you think, David? I think this is absolute nonsense, <laughs> albeit convincingly told. I, I think if Alan Sugar wanted to play ping-pong, he'd have a proper table yeah. table and he'd play it on that. So, so we, we think it's not true. We think it's not true. No. Think it's a lie? Yes. OK. Um, Nick, truth or lie? It's a damned lie. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lie. Uh, Nick doesn't wind down by playing ping-pong on the boardroom table with Lord Sugar. I instructed Deliveroo to block my orders after my bacon sandwich addiction got out of hand. <laughs> right. So, how many bacon sandwiches were you, were you getting? When it really, really got bad. It, w it was about four or five times a week. I mean, just how posh are you? Were you ordering out for bacon butties? <laughs> Where was the restaurant you were getting them from? Well, actually, the most embarrassing part of it is that, you know, I can get a bacon sandwich a mere 45 seconds away from my front door. 
Were right. they delivering from the place that was that close? Yeah. <laughs> okay, right, hear me out. There is no greater joy than a bacon sarnie in bed, right? Oh, I can think of some. <laughs> Deliver to your bed. Well, no, you have to remove yourself from said bed and go to the front door. But well, it's then, if, it's, than... if it's that right. close, you must be halfway to the shop at that point. <laughs> <laughs> your big concern, the addiction, consists of four or five a week, which is sort of less than one a day. Well, that's a lot, though. I mean, quite a lot. Yeah, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. Of it's not an addiction, is it? Well, I mean, well, I've got a Weetabix addiction in that case. <laughs> Tell us about the bacon sandwich, Toff. Was it a bog-standard one or was yeah. it something a little bit special? No, it's a classic. White bread, Tommy K, bacon, job done. Not Tommy K, did you say? What does that mean? <laughs> Tomato ketchup. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did Tommy you know K that? Was the name. Tommy K, everyone knows what Tommy K is. No, they don't. Don't yes, get on. Don't get I on the knew kids' what Tommy K was. <laughs> no, you didn't. Even though I'm a man who prefers Bobby Brown, I did know what Tommy <laughs> K was. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Oh, I did. Um, would you order anything else with it, or was it just the bacon sandwich? Well, it depends. If I'm feeling a bit fruity, I'd have an OJ, but... Orange juice! Orange juice! juice. <laughs> orange juice. Yeah. Would you maybe add a, a bob? Would you add a bob to it? Shut oh, up. Would you add a bob? <laughs> a B.O.B. -B, bit of butter? Didn't you know that? <laughs> oh, so you're, so, you're so old, Grandad. <laughs> Why did you block the Deliveroo account? Why didn't you just stop ordering them? I tried that. I tried just not ordering, but my willpower is quite obviously not good enough. So R I emailed the... Delivery HQ yeah. and and basically asked them. I thought it was quite funny at the you, time, but then how they did you word it? Me. Hello, I've got a bacon sandwich addiction. Help, please block my account. <laughs> <laughs> and did they and get I, back to you? No, but I then tried to order two days later and I couldn't log into my account. <laughs> it's been reinstated since. I emailed again because it is actually quite annoying. What did you do? What was the, How did you email? What was that? <laughs> Hello, I made an enormous mistake. Please, can I come back? <laughs> No, that was the email you sent to me. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly did not. <laughs> what do you think, uh, Ellie? She's telling it well, but I don't think it's the truth. Why? Because, Lee, I think she's lying. <laughs> I think she's clearly insane. <laughs> I think it's true. Absolutely true, 100%. Lee? Yeah, I'll say it's true. You're going to say true? Tough. Truth or lie? It is true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yes, it's true. Tough really did have to block her own bacon sandwich orders. <coughs> it is David. <clears throat> As a child, I was scared of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> what, what age? Um, I think this will probably be when I was four, five, six, seven, <laughs> that sort of age. Four, when five, I was 4,567. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I was still in my infancy as a god. <laughs> what was it about the sun that you found frightening? Uh, it, it was uh, looking at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you just go out at night or something? You, you, you never went out during the day? No, I, di I did go out during the day, but I, I would uh, sort of obsessively keep my eyes towards the ground. Oh, right. The problem was that someone said, someone used the phrase, if you look at the sun, you will go blind. Funny enough, exactly the same advice for me as well, but it was page three of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so you would still go out, but you would, not, you would avoid it anyway. Yeah. And then, it. yeah, and then, you know, occasionally you sort of turn your head and the sun goes through your vision yeah. and it can create that slight, you know, when you blink, you can still see. After, uh, yeah. 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 And you and, thought that was burning. And I thought, right, well, yeah, what's that? Is that the beginning of, of the, the, the great eternal darkness? Yeah. You know. You really had a happy childhood, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> we were all then on our rally grifters and you were thinking about the eternal darkness. <laughs> Did anything else scare you as a child? Oh, yes, yes, most things. <laughs> What else, oh. Gurdjie? Well, I, the, the trouble is that some children are timorous and some children are reckless. Yeah, and so I'm Sagittarius. And in order... <laughs> <laughs> but in order to save the lives of reckless children, warnings are calibrated for their safety, which... the result of which is that the timorous live in a state of perpetual, perpetual terror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
a great... Yeah, what I needed to be told is, you know what, most days you won't die, it's fine. You know, it's, <laughs> you know not... You know, I wasn't ever going to tear across a three-lane motorway. Right. You know, the very existence of a three-lane motorway in the same postcode as me <laughs> made me not want to leave the house. <laughs> And, um, presumably, you would wait for about three weeks before swimming after a meal. <laughs> oh, absolutely! <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and having an ice cream in the afternoon and then thinking, well, well I should probably not swim for the rest of the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone says, when I was an adult, you don't have to wait at all! It's yeah. all a myth! You can swim and eat! Did you have... <laughs> <laughs> While looking into the sun. <laughs> So what are we thinking? Adam? I, I'm thinking true, true fact. I'm going truth. So you're saying it's the truth? Yeah. Go on, we'll say it's true. You're going to say that it's true. OK. David, truth or lie? It is true. Oh. Oh. It's a whole human story. <laughs> yes, it's true. As a child, David was scared of the sun. It once took four people to rescue me after I got stuck in a baby's cot. <laughs> Team. Um, right. Well, first of all, how old were you? Uh, I was a grown-up. Why were you in a cot? Well, because I was trying it out, just to see how it felt. Did you not have a cot when you were a baby? I did, <laughs> but I couldn't remember what that felt like. So, was it, was it in someone's house? Wait a second. <laughs> no, it was in a cot shop. Showroom, showroom. Yes, oh. it was in a show... Thank you. Were you thinking of having a, a I was very... I was pregnant. Oh, you were very pregnant I was pregnant. Oh. Ah. And I, so I was there and I thought, I can't buy a cot without trying it. Like, you know, you need a test drive of beds. You know, do I'm I... I'm glad you to... weren't buying a potty. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get in the cot if you were so heavily pregnant? Yes, good. Excellent. <laughs> you know, bars yeah. on the side of the cot, and I sort of just wheeled myself in, and then it was embarrassing. Wheeled yourself front, front, in? Well, it's frontwards. Yes, yeah, so like a dive, like a swallow dive. But those, Even though those it... things usually come down, don't they, at the side a bit? You can sort of oh, shh, move that, them down That's what I did. What I did... Oh, wow. <laughs> ..is the point. On the side of the cot, I don't know whether you're aware, they have a little... Schmuckety... I'm aware, because I just told you. Yes. <laughs> Good. And I just got it down and I got in the cot just to see how it would feel. Is and then it did you put the bars back up again? I don't... I, this, I can't remember... You yes, must have done, I otherwise did. you wouldn't have been stuck. I, I did. I put the... Exactly. Was it? <laughs> exactly, you were there. And then how, how did you get out then? Did somebody help you? They, the people had to help me. Four in the, people. In the cot in Port... Exactly. Who were these people? people? Well, they were just the people who worked in the... What? in John Lewis. Four people's a lot. Or maybe mm. it's just a good mm. service at John Lewis. It is a good child. <laughs> You've got two fragile things. You have, uh, you don't want to hurt the woman who's pregnant. Cough. Yes. And maybe mentally ill. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then you have the other side of it, which is you've got um, a product Cough that's on display. Cough for sale. Yeah, it's for sale. You don't want it to be... Kind of you don't want it to be... Let's not forget the unborn baby. And, and the tiny baby. <laughs> so what do you think, Lee? Mm, what do you think, Steve? True or lie? I've got a feeling it's true. If you'd have been stuck in a cot, how many people would have come and helped you? Uh, uh, well, it would have been length problems more than anything else. It would, have been, it would have been an odd-shaped cot that you could fit in. Uh, coffin. Only head would have been... Coffin? <laughs> 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 the opposite. Steve <laughs> Davis stuck in coffin. <laughs> well, would would you in a coffin shop, would you try that out to see if it's... <laughs> you know, cos you're in that a lot longer, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to say? I'm going to say it's true. All right. Claudia, truth or lie? It is. True. <laughs> Possession. Ah, there's a box under the desk. Just pop the box on the desk and then there's a card inside it. Before you take out the possession, just read the card, please. This is one of the pairs of leg warmers for birds that I have made. <laughs> I would have brought more, but birds are using them. <laughs> Could you show us these leg warmers? I live uh, beside the canal, and the uh, the swans are very unhappy around there. The swans? The... <laughs> You've tried to put a leg warmer on a swan. <laughs> he hasn't oh, that, that... tried to. He succeeded. How the hell do you... a swan? <laughs> so they're trying to feed it over the webbing, and he doesn't get crushed. 
a great big yeah, beak on a... Everyone on a... knows about this, but if you befriend the swan... Yeah. The first thing, you know you befriend the swan when the wings go up like that, and then generally the next thing, they go like that, as in, make, make me leg warmers. That's it. <laughs> they for swans? David, they would break your arm if you went near them. I Famously. Know. Famously. No, that's yeah, no. what they do. <laughs> They break your arm and then the no. queen eats them. Yes. <laughs> How do you get them over the feet? Right, got... If you put if you put your hand like that and then yeah. try, yeah. try and get it over there. It's like OJ Simpson. Stick yeah. it on there. That's yeah. a swan. That's a swan yeah, That's a swan. With yeah. the swan, it's all about authority. So watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, oh. that, that went. They're That's webbed. no good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're... That's going to hurt the swan. You've just ripped through no. its webbing. <laughs> you know ones. when you said swan at the beginning? Yeah. Did you mean sparrow? <laughs> <laughs> David, it's time to take a guess. I mean, I don't know which way you're going to go on this. <laughs> maybe a swan could be able to slip that over its foot, and maybe a swan would derive tremendous warmth from this incredibly thin and flimsy <laughs> and short piece of material going an inconsiderable distance <laughs> up its really rather long leg. I think it's true. Don't say that! I think it's true. Don't say, because that's the sort of... True. That's what happens to your mind in this game. You say, and you start thinking, oh, yeah, of course, the, f the fact that he said swan and it seems impossible <laughs> is exactly what's so it's plausible. About it. <laughs> if you people don't start taking this a bit more seriously, I'm going to bring my Uncle Ian out here again. <laughs> so what are you going to go for? I think we're going to say lie. Lie? Um, and saying it's a lie. It's, I'd just David like to say, to Rob, Yes. if it's true, yes. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> David, truth or lie? I'm afraid my tale of swan leg warmers is a lie. No. Oh, thank you, God. Who would have thought it? Oh, the thought it. Yes, it's a lie. David doesn't make leg warmers for birds. I can smell if there is a dead fly in the room. <laughs> can I just say, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I can smell a dead fly in the room. So, uh, it's what you're saying, that if there isn't a dead fly in the room, you have no sense of smell. No, that's not what I'm saying. And, so, and, and you know damn well that's not what I'm saying, David. No, I can smell if there is a dead fly in the room. I can smell the dead fly. So is the one... Is there a dead fly in here? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't smell a dead fly in this room, obviously. This is, so is no... a normal-sized room, I see. Okay, okay well, yeah. a room in my house. How do you prove this? Can you, do you actually sniff it out? Can you actually, like a sniffer dog, you actually find the dead fly with your nose? I or you just go, no, no, no. I never, dead fly I never told you I could find them. You can't locate it, you just know it's somewhere within the walls. <laughs> well, not within the walls. I'm not talking about flies that might have been killed by a serial killer and then sort of plastered Yeah, in. yeah. I can't I smell them. No, I can't smell no. them. No, no. Definitely not. Right, uh, OK. But you can't locate them, you just know there's somewhere in the room. I can smell if there's a dead fly in the room. So where's... <laughs> <laughs> How can you put it to the test? Because you might have been in a room in which there was a dead fly and you have not smelt it and said there is no dead fly in this room. And people have believed you uh, and yet I've lurking in the corner... It's a good question, Joan. It's a very good question. And I wish that I had a good answer. <laughs> Just by the law of averages, there's been too many times when I've gone in a room and gone, there's a dead fly in this room, and quite often we will see the dead fly. What do you mean Does quite often? It has to be always. It has to be always. I can smell if there's a dead fly in the room, so I will go in and go, I, I think there's a dead fly in the room. That's just a polite way of talking, David. I don't go, there is a dead fly in the room! It's a fact every time! This it's room just, talks in this way! I talk, I talk more softly than you, David. Okay. I have a soft... <laughs> I don't show off about yeah. my talents. Okay. I walk in a room and I go, I think there's a dead fly in this room. In fact, no! I think you'll find there is definitely. <laughs> <laughs> there always is! There always is! What does the dead fly smell of? It's a, it's a smell that I, I wouldn't want to describe to a friend. Try! Imagine you're a wine connoisseur, right. but it's the smell of a dead I'm fly. I'm getting... Get, yeah, uh, what are you getting? I'm getting a, I'm getting a bit of wing. I'm getting... Uh, <laughs> I'm getting another wing. Uh, 
And uh, how many wings would fly? Is it two or four? Four. four. Another wing. <laughs> and a f uh, no, wait, wait. There's only three wings. I, I, I think I know how this fly died. Um... <laughs> You've not really described the smell there. You, no, you've, you described said you... the, you've described the body parts of a fly <laughs> while I'm making sniffing noises. Well, I can't, you know, you're a, you're, I'm a professional, you're an amateur. How, I'm trying to say it in layman's terms. Well, <laughs> I, earlier on, I was... Uh, hmm? I came to see you in your dressing room to say hello, and I had a little look in the window, and only now I'm thinking there was a dead fly in there and you never mentioned it. Before you came, and I went, hmm, smell of fly. But I found that that, that, that smell was soon overpowered, you... Jason. <laughs> <laughs> David, time to make your mind up. Is he telling the truth? Is that whole fly-smelling thing real? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> le let us pay him the respect of pretending to consider it. Um, <laughs> yes. you, you don't believe him? I do he not says, believe but, him. Well, I think lie. <laughs> you think lie? You're saying lie. OK. Lee, were you telling the truth or was that a lie? I've actually started believing it myself. <laughs> It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I am currently seeing a hypnotist to cure me of my compulsion to visit hypnotists. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think this is going to take too long. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been had a compulsion to see hypnotists? Well, it started off, I had a fear of heights, and I visited a, a, a lot of different practitioners. It is a serious enough thing. I mean, it is. It's unusual to be this high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I tried hypnosis, and then I seemed to be getting something temporary from it, so then I ended up visiting a lot more hi what, hypnotists. What were you getting temporary from it? I, I was getting some relief from it for a from, while. From your, from your fear of heights? Yeah. So you're now relieved of that at this point? Why would you go back? Oh, because then uh, the relief is temporary, so I, I ended up going back and then I ended up getting uh, really uh, addicted to visiting dip different hit. What do they do? <laughs> Normally they just put me under for a minute put and then... Put under what? Put yeah. water. <laughs> they, they make me... It's serious. They make me lie, <laughs> lie on the ground. So they make you lie on the ground? <laughs> How's that going to cure your fear of fires? That should, surely they should make you lie on top of the cupboard? <laughs> Well, I am knocked out during this, and then when I, uh, when I wake up, they put me on top of something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, how many different hypnotists have you seen? I don't know. It's into the hundreds at this point. <laughs> hundreds of hypnotists? It was costing... Most of my income was going on it. I mean, I would do... Whatever money I could get was just going straight into hypnosis then. <laughs> how long have you been seeing the, the one you've been seeing now for to get, to get you off being seen a hypnotist? Well... This one, about two years now. I mean, um, it, it, so the yeah. man you've been seeing for the last two years has been specifically to st for, for the problem that you want to stop seeing hypnotists. <laughs> not, not for the height thing anymore, just... I'm addicted to hypnotists, I need to stop. That's what you're seeing him for. Yeah. And you've been seeing him for two years. <laughs> we are nearly... At, we're nearly out of the woods. <laughs> Do they ever touch you in any way? Generally, the sort of uh, severe vertigo hypnosis I get doesn't involve physical contact, but it does involve being winched up. Winched up? <laughs> well, winched up to get, to get the height, so then when you vertigo. come around, you're, you're at a height and you so, think, so this you, is normal. When, you, when, you, when he puts you under... Well, this is going back when I had the serious problem, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Well, let's go back to that problem. The bit that interests me, the winching up. So yeah. he, they, they, they put you out and, and then you're gone. Do you remember being... Do you wake up and no, go... No, you're gone. You, you put on a sort of Velcro suit at the stars <laughs> and then... <laughs> Same. No, it's like you're, I'm gone, and then it's come down from up there on top of the uh, <laughs> top of the cupboard. So they winch you up, and then winch you down onto the cupboard. Now I can get down because I've been <laughs> hypnotised. So, but you've been winched up to go on top of the cupboard <laughs> while I'm under. Yeah. So he winches you up, then slightly nudges, <laughs> slightly nudges you over the cupboard and winches you down again. <laughs> why? Why does he have to put you on the cupboard? Why does he just winch you up and keep you winched? What's the advantage of being on a cupboard over being winched up? Have you got a fear of being up high on cupboards? <laughs> What's the name of the hypnotist you're seeing? Dr Spanks. <laughs> <laughs> Never before. Never before. As a you're man. doing really well. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it. <laughs> 
sentence and you don't know how it's going to end. It's never happened before with just two words, doctor and spank. <laughs> It's a tricky one. Well, it's a tough one. I'm really going with you on this one. What do you say? <laughs> Even if I believed everything else, I've never met anybody German called Spanks. <laughs> it's S P E on blows. G H N K S. You just ruined it. <laughs> oh, is that what ruined it? Because there is never an umlaut on an E. There's never a man being velcroed and. <laughs> Lee. I'm say it's a lie then. He's saying it's a lie. David O'Doherty, was that fantastic tale the truth or was it a lie? Incredible as it seems, that is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, unsurprisingly, it's a lie. David isn't seeing a hypnotist to cure him of a compulsion to visit hypnotists. So I went to see a hypnotist once. All the time he was saying, look into my eyes, look in... Sorry, sorry, not hypnotist, optician. 